Hi guys, it's Chris, and today on Amiga Stuff, it's a very special edition because A, I'm wearing pants, and B, you know it's always a good day when you get a package from our friends at Amiga Kit. Now, what is this? What do I got going on? Um, what it is, is number one, the sensor cable for the 1200 that I ordered a while back. We got that in. But also, this is going to be a replacement of the board that I currently have in my 1200. And I know it would help if I had my 1200 here to show you. The original 8 megabyte uh, optional FPU board for the 1200 that I had reviewed previously. We're going to take a peek at it in just a second. But what this card is, this board is A, number one, this is a lot better board, I can tell you right now, because it has the thin uh, Amiga 1200 belly slot thing. The previous one had kind of like an old fat dog, and I had to kind of file it down a little bit to get over the plastic that's right on the edge of the 1200. So we're going to test the old insertion factor on this. Uh, this also has the same jumpers for the four, uh, the 5.5 or the 8 meg of RAM, and the internal, external, or off for FPU. You have a nice jumper here for flash off or on. Now there have been a couple people that have done reviews on these in the past, but this will be my unique taste of it. It also has a JTAG connector and an optional power 5 volt and ground header here. That's cool if you're running some old optional accessories, like you want to be weird and like me and put a fan on it. Uh, the JTAG module is probably for flash updates if they're not done through the Amiga. It has some software that we're going to go over that's kind of built in here, which is cool. No need to find them old floppy disks and wonder if they got a read error. That's great. Brand new crystal. And we also have the dual clock port on here too. So you can use the Amiga Kit RTC module and you even get a clock port expansion. So you have like, what, four of those things now on Amiga 1200? And of course, Amiga Kit branded 8 Mega RAM A1200 flash expansion with the AmigaKit.com logo. So here's my Amiga 1200. She's got the old AGA Scan Plus. So I put the VGA type connector. You can rock the DVI or the HDMI, I guess. I don't know. So for the 311th time, I'm going to open this up. But before I do, we got to test the old ease of insertion. This card is an Amiga Kit card too. And while it works, you'll see I had to file down the old edge right here. The new one is lower by two millimeters, three millimeters possibly. This way. All right, here we go. And oh man, that's it. So uh, yeah, right in. I don't have any problems. Thank you guys for fixing this connector, or thank Foxconn or whoever the heck did it. But you still can file this down, and you're good to go. Look, this one, the original board comparison, check that out. She's a little bit longer. We got the same RAM, we got the same jumpers. They've been relocated a little bit, like... But, you know, for the most part, the lattice chip, all that stuff, we got the two flash ROMs here. Nice. Same clock board RTC module. She's just a little bit bigger, got the flash RAM. Same JTAG header. Same plus 5 volt and ground. Just a newer revision of the card. This one's nice because you got some flash storage. Okay, in we go. Now, I'm going to put my lid back on, and I actually, I think for once, I don't actually have to open this up. I always open things up because I'm doing something with them. So this is all how it's going to be. This is your Amiga, just like my Amiga. I'm going to plug this VGA in and flip the old monitor here to VGA. Might even screw it in. We're going to be using the Amiga Kit optical mouse. This is also a great replacement for your old tank mouse or your, your Lance Armstrong like I have or any DB9 based mouse. She's a DB9, has a hooded connector. Now my beef with this is I always have to reboot it again. There we go. Because for some reason it just doesn't like me and I have to reboot again. Once it's booted I have mouse but if we're going to test it. Taking a while to boot. I keep forgetting it's only an EC020. Okay, so here's my beef with this mouse. I have a mouse. It doesn't work. 
it doesn't work. But if I reboot, it'll work. I don't know what's up with that. Maybe I got a weird mouse. Where is my GoTech drive, man? Ouch! Son of a Maybe that's good. Gosh. Okay. So now my mouse works. Isn't that freaking weird? We're gonna do the old sysinfo. Because why not? This is 4.0, I haven't got 4.2 yet. 46.143 kickstart. Let me uh make it easier for you. Gotta get my make a meager grade again hat, because it makes people so happy. So 68 ECO 2882, we're seeing it. We'll we'll run the uh AIBB results too. So we're gonna do uh memory first. We're on 8 meg, 24 bit. 2 meg, 24 bit chip. Okay, so we're just gonna do speed. Should be about 15 point something. Usually what it always is. I'm using about 1.5 times faster than A1200, 15.2. And actually we are 2.29 times faster. Cool, huh? So I like that right off the bat. It's still 15.2, but these numbers make me happy. And I always click the enlarge when I got a little one. Wait a minute. Boards. 8 meg, Zora 2. There we go. So there's the Amiga Kit logo with the flash things. Now I did do a fresh power on, so I'm probably going to have to reboot to get my mouse to work. Son of As you can see, we have a flash install. But I'm going to have to reboot to get my mouse to work. Maybe I just got a bum one. I don't know. Got my mouse back. We'll wait for Virus Z to piss me off. So we got flash install here. We're going to install. This is all part of the card. You don't need to download any drivers. We're going to say proceed, proceed. Welcome to the Amiga Kit Flash Configurator Installer. This will copy the GUI and the documentation to your sec to your system. It's going to make a folder called flash underscore configurator. Would you like to create a backup of the current flash? This will enable you to restore the card to factory state. It'll take four megs of disk space and only take a few seconds. I got the disk space. You knock yourself out. It's doing some kind of magic down here. You can see in the lower right corner. There we go. Would you like to read the documentation now? I sure would. Yes, please. Built on the success of the Amiga Kit 8 meg flashcard. That was this fella right here. Which will go in the other 1200. With an additional 4 meg of user configurable memory. In addition to the 8 meg fast memory for any Amiga 12. Hunter computer, this NV flash RAM. Oh, so it's four megs of flash RAM. Sweet. You can store, it's all non-volatile, so you can store different versions of Amiga Kickstart ROMs and resident modules without having to physically change the hardware ROMs. Awesome. So, this provides the ideal upgrade path for users that purchase 3.1.4. So you don't have to keep putting the stupid install disk in to get the icon library and the workbench library. We're going to copy it to here. You can drag her on over. You can store up to 30 configurations. So we're not going to get into resident modules and stuff like that. So the benefits of this card are, I don't have to open this Amiga. We're going to pretend I have Workbench 3.0 and the 3.0 ROMs installed. Right, so right. educating myself a little more. I had to go away from the Amiga Kit mouse. I just got tired of the double reboot. So I made a configuration Workbench 3.0, but I put a Kickstart 1.3 in it. I'm taking the disc out. Let's see what happens if I try to do a kickstart. 1.3 ROM. Awesome. So it works. We're going to reboot and hit F1 again. Look at that. It's a 1.3 looking config because that's what I'm in. So I'm going to flip this back to off and I'm going to put this down to 4 mega fast. Why? These things. Since I have 3.1.4 ROMs on the original Amiga 1200 Amiga Kit card, uh, I could run the 8 Mega Flash and have access to PCM CIA. Let's see what's different with this card. I guess I should have left it at 8, but you know how I work. I'm just all over the place. It's a windy, wet road, and eventually we'll get where we're going. We're going to go into this flash display, go into this configuration, you're going to see. I can rename this to 1.3. Whoops, that's F10. 1.3. Let's just do kick 1.3. How about that? Kick start 1.3.
You might have a disc you want to boot. That's Kickstart 1.3 only. You see, you got the non volatile library. I don't know why, because it was in there. And Amiga OS 1.3 ROM. I can repeat this process for a Workbench 1.2. I can just go clone config. So we're going to do this. Watch. We're going to go clone config. And I'm going to say control X. I'm going to call this Workbench or Kickstart. Let's see. Kickstart 2.3.0. Right? I'm going to take this out, remove that one, and I'm going to grab, make this bigger so we can see. Then we'll check PCMCA, sorry. So here is the 3.0, oh, no, 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 sir. I just like double clicking, there we go. So this is the 3.0 oh, A1200 ROM. That should still boot my hard drive. And we'll say, save the flash. Now I have 1.3, 3.0, the software setup and default config, which is the Amiga Kit Splash. Now, if I wanted to, I could put the splash screen just by double clicking on whatever I want, and it adds the Amiga Kit splash screen. Or your own splash screen, just an IFF. Now, I'm going to plop a PCMCA card in. This one is a 512 meg. I got a 4 gigger somewhere. I don't know where. Upstairs. All right, oh, there it is. So here's my compact flash card, 12% full. There's my stuff. PCMCA works fine. Great. Amabag Tools. Benchmarks. Let's run AIBB. I want to see what that old floating point's doing. Like how we bounce around. Alright. So this is a... We're going to do CP Math for code processor. We're going to do the beach ball. That seems to be the go-to. 68020, 35 megahertz, which is about close enough to 40. This is a uh, FPU beach ball. Now remember, I'm in a different screen mode, so it's a little bit flickery at times. Well, it'll flash because it's going to a NTSC slash or PAL mode for me. All right. So me, stock A1200 is here at whatever. Me, it took 16.37 seconds on that 40 megahertz 882. Not bad at all. As a comparison, we're going to take me to standard math and we're going to run the beach ball. It sucks. It's like a minute. I don't feel like waiting for it. Should I? Yeah. I'll zoom to the end. Bro. Holy Christmas. Good God, would you hurry up? Okay, so after 8,178,000 seconds, I drank almost my whole beer. So what are you going to rock? what is it, 15 megahertz or 40? I'll take the 40. So the FPU is working great. The card is working great. There's so many benefits to this card over the other 8 meg card. It goes in, just, just slides right in. You get four different modes of RAM. What I have an issue with is every time I try to run Lemmings on this thing, because it's a Kickstart 1.3 disc, it acts weird on my 1200 on disk. I can WHD loader all day long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do F1 and I'm going to roll this to that config that 1.3 ROM we're going to do 4 meg, I don't care. Kickstart 1.3. Got the 302 and we're going to reboot with Lemmings disk 1 in the ADF GoTech. DF0. I just want to see if it's going to boot. And I forgot to tell it, pal. Sorry in advance. Every time I load this game, it crashes. Holy crap, it worked. I don't have my audio hooked up, but I don't care. So they're right there. Gamers, you need this card. It's not expensive at all. Bam. 89 bucks. Oh, that's pounds. Wait a minute. Isn't that, what's that, euro? Let's go US dollars. 100 bucks for this card. I finally got my lemmings working. Kickstart 1.3 on an Amiga 1200 with no fuss. I don't have to take my Amiga apart. I mean, look, I didn't take my Amiga apart. I still didn't put the sensor wire in yet. Awesome. Please insert this too. I just press a button. Boom. I'm loading lemmings. Didn't have to take the my Amiga apart besides the trapdoor. 
I slid the card in. I didn't know what I was doing. I did nothing. I can finally play Lemmings. I don't know why my Amiga 1200 here would not play Lemmings. So anyway, I'm going to reboot. Now, if you screw up your config, let me go over that. Turn the power off for 10 seconds. If you turn the power off for 10 seconds, I'm going to take my Lemmings ADF out. That seems about 10 seconds, right? Turn it back on. It will load your default configuration. So whatever it came with is whatever it's loading. Which is the one with the little disc and stuff. Because I'm learning this new piece of technology with its software, which is not hard at all. It's pretty simple. Drag a kickstart, drag, drag some libraries over, save a config. Make yourself a workbench one, two, three. Three one. Three one four, three nine, whatever you got. Three nine. Get myself a custom ROM. Would I recommend it? Hell yeah, I'd recommend it. It's a great card. I'd recommend it just because it fits. You can slide that puppy right in. I'd recommend it number two because Amiga 1200 cards, there's no pie storm for the Amiga 1200 yet. But for a hundred bucks, man, you got eight megs of fast RAM. Easy insertion. You like that? Um, I know it should be easy insertion, but there was a lot of the Chineseium cards or the connectors that the Foxconn repops that just didn't work. They were thick. You know, it caused a lot of problems for people that don't know or fear filing on your card that you spent a hundred bucks on. You don't want to file on it. You don't want to mess it up. What if you screwed something up on one of these little tiny solder joints? That's fixed. Don't worry about that. This card's a huge upgrade because it gives you the clock port stuff just like the previous version did. Gives you the FPU. Hell, if you have the other card, order this one without the FPU, pop the FPU in from the other one, pow! You got your 40 megahertz, your 35, whatever it was. 125 bucks with an FPU. If you want to add on the clock module, man, you could add it on the clock module for 25 bucks. So 150 bucks all together with an FPU and a clock with a sensor. Do you really need an FPU if you're just a gamer? You don't. Maybe you get sensors. I'm running at 93.9 .9 degrees internal temperature. Hey, that's great. Am I pleased? Hell yeah, I'm pleased. I was pleased with the last card when I filed her down. Works great. The PCMCIA works great. Got 8 megs of RAM. You get the flash install built in. That ADF is built in. You don't have to worry about it. <laughs> There's my temperature sensor on top of an Alice adapter board for the Alice because she gets hot. Lisa's got some heat sinks on her. Not really worried about it. Um, anyway, back to this guy. So everything was working fine. I went to restore the image, which I restored. And then all of a sudden when I rebooted, it freaked out. Freaked out meaning no bueno. No boot. So don't forget your thing, you idiot. So I uh, reached out to Matthew, who was probably asleep because it's 2 in the morning in the UK. And uh, it's just dinner time here in the United States, about 7-ish or 8 or so. So then I couldn't, you know, wait because I'm impatient. I know another guy that's got one of these. He just did a video on him. You might have heard of him. He does these really short videos on Amiga stuff. They're 10 minutes long each. Doug. Anyway, I reached out to Doug. Thanks, Doug. And I said, hey, do you have this file because I broke my stuff? It took two seconds, and I had to take the cover off anyway for the sensor. So with the sensor wire installed, you can see now that I'm getting temperature readings from where I put the sensor. So the CPU temp is actually my Alice chip. Just so I can keep an old eye on her. Internal temperature is the ambient around the clock chip, which is in the vicinity of the CPU. All my junk's got heat sinks. You saw how she looked like Mr. T. 92.7 on the Alice chip. So my graphics are nice and cool. I gotta flip this jumper to flash off. Flash off. That way it'll boot without the configurations that are screwed up, which are preventing me from booting to flash it again. And it's good to break things like this. So you know how they work. I was in the flash configurator and I wanted to show you how to erase the flash and restore the flash if you have a problem. So I was going to go in and show you that you can erase the flash, restore the flash, or backup. I'm going to make another backup, call it 
backup and backup 3 is the file and save it's backing up flash RAM which is what it did from the get-go except it corrupted it what you do is you can say check flash it'll CRC check all the stuff in flash and tell you if you're okay flash contents are okay watch this this is what I was attempting to show you erase flash oh no everything's gone except the bootloader right and now I went and then I went restore flash and I said my backup restoring flash memory which it would do it puts a lot of them on so there we go so now I'm back no errors right check flash checking let's see if she is correct now flash contents okay this is what mine did watch this I'm gonna say erase flash bye bye bootloader of course restore flash this is my original one restoring flash memory restored okay right Oops, flash install has a checksum error. Oh no. Checksum error, checksum error. And I lost my image. Then, when you reboot, it just unleashes all sorts of hell. So once again, we're going to erase the flash. And we're going to restore the backup that I just did. That passes. And check it once again. Important safety tip from the dude that screws it up. So you don't have to. When you make a backup, make a couple of them, just in case. Make one, two, make three of them. You never know. And then just check the flash before you make a backup. Maybe something was up with mine. I don't, I don't, I don't know. There's my flash install. She's looking good now. And then when you quit, it's going to say you got to reboot. Reboot. And we should be good to go. Get the Amiga Kit logo. You'll get your boot. And if you're having any weirdness, take a, uh, what do you call these now? Take a cotton swab with some isopropyl alcohol, spit, whatever you got. Lube up the old copper dudes, top and bottom. Give them a good scrubbing. And give this card a couple, you know, removes and insertions. Just to make sure it's, it's grabbing on. Um, Weird things happen when you have 99% of your contacts touching. It might work perfect until you do that one thing that you're trying to film and everything screws up. So there's your disc with your install again. And one more final thought with Amiga OS 3.2 coming out, you don't have to buy the ROM. You can do the digital ROM, flash it as a configuration of the card, have all of the entire kickstart line on there pretty much. So if you're interested in getting this uh, card from Amiga Kit, I will link it in the description down below. Please be sure to check out their other great products. They make a ton of stuff for the Amiga. If you haven't checked out their website, give it a holler. It's got a lot of stuff. So thanks for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something.